We are loading up the bus and we are off to Bedford, Kentucky for the Dirty Turtle. We've been to this park once before. I think it was a year ago, two years ago. I'm not sure, time flies, but we're heading back to the Turtle. Joe Lawson, the guy that owns it, it's really cool. We like going back here and hanging out with these fellas. They got a, an event going on this weekend. That's freaking crazy. That ain't even right. <laughs> I mean, that was unreal. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Time to saddle up, boys, because it's about to get up. The Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park is 270 riding acres. We cater from folks that have never rode before all the way up to your professional rock buggies. It's a mix of hill climbs, creek banks, mud bogs, rock ledges, pretty much anything you can conjure up off-road, we have out here at this facility. What do you like most about the Dirty Turtle? Uh, the variety of trails. First time here, come out of Cincinnati and everything. Come here and it's a good time. Watch all those rock climbers and everything. Excellent time. We're getting ready to go riding. We are here at the Turtle, hanging out. It's a beautiful weekend. We got a bunch of riders. A lot of them uh, entered at dealerships to come here and ride and hang out for the weekend. It's pretty cool. You know, you get to bring your kids to work with you. I am a young adult. She still lives in my house. For years, I've been an avid off-roader and started out riding four-wheelers and used to have to travel four and five hours to ride on public uh, state land. Uh, state started closing land, which closed down places to legally ride. And so I told myself when I was 19 years old that one day I'm going to have an off-road facility. I knew it in my mind. I just couldn't visualize what it was. And three years ago, my dream became a reality, and it's grown ever since. And this is people's escape. Doesn't matter if they come out here and break in three or four minutes. Every person comes in with a smile and leaves with a smile. And to have a small part in that, as, as corny as it sounds, it's kind of refreshing. So what we have here is one of our many side-by-side -side rock bouncing trails and so forth. We've got some good friends up from uh, Mississippi uh, today. They're actually gonna try to climb this rock bank here. Uh, it's really made for rock buggies, but these guys are serious enough with their cages on their side-by-sides that they're gonna give it a whirl. We gotta park all over the south and just climb hills like this. Yeah. Feel feel safe in a roll cage. My dad built it, spider right off road. His cage was actually one of the first ones I done just to kind of be a rock bouncer style for the razors. Mm -hmm. uh, the razor trend's just been growing like wildfire. I know he drives really crazy, and I'd rather him be in something with a cage around it that'll protect him. I don't feel safe in a regular roll cage, not rolling over. He's my test rider, and he puts it through the test. He's, I mean, he's back flipped it, back over on the wheels, and kept on going. I usually just close my eyes until it's over and see him at the top. What's that called right there? I have no idea. The oak I rat bar. <laughs> That's a good name for it. I don't know. We'll have to see. I think we might be doing some roll cage testing. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> now what's your secret? Put it in high four drive and go. Those people are crazy. Nuts.
Lots of mud at the turtle. I mean, lots of mud. It was a little bit dusty on our ride, but man, there was tons of mud. People were out in the mud holes letting it rip. They were having a good time. They loved the mud at the turtle. This is kind of our playground down here. It's a series of three or four small holes. That way, someone that has never got in the mud, they can get in and play, but they won't bury themselves. Now, we have holes that are eight, nine foot deep for the big boys. People always joke about taking out pounds and pounds of turtle mud uh, from us, so I don't charge for taking out mud. That's what you do when you're doing something. <laughs> Stay connected with Brian and Fisher's ATV World by joining them on Facebook and Twitter. Fisher's ATV World is brought to you by Progressive ATV Insurance, Can-Am, ITP Tires and Wheels, Ride Royal Blue, Hatfield and McCoy Trails, and Yamaha. The Dirty Turtle has some easy stuff, but a lot of it is moderate to difficult. If you got something that you want to bring here and see how it does performance wise, if you feel you got a big and bad enough machine or you want to challenge the turtle, this is a great place to come let it all hang out. They provide a riding area that has so many unique different qualities. You can trail ride, you can hill climb, you can bring your buggy, you can bring your, your rock climber, your rail buggy, your side by side, your ATV, your dirt bike, your kid's dirt bike, and it's less than 45 minutes away from two large metropolitan areas. There's not that many people that live that close to this kind of a riding area that has this much variety. Southern Rock Racing has put together a series of these extreme drivers from across the Southeast United States. It started out with hill climbing or what we call rock bouncing where you come up to a trail and you kind of bounce up it. Well then that spun off and they created rock racing which is racing through the woods as fast as you can go up over hills as fast as you can go and anytime you involve speed it increases the excitement level. We're heading down here to the side-by-side -side hill climb races, and then we're going to check out the rock bouncers. That's what everybody's here for. It's a party at the Turtle. It's going to get crazy. All the drivers that's racing in the side-by-side -side race to come over here to the tent. We're going to have a driver's meeting. All the drivers racing side-by-sides. I couldn't believe how high that guy got up in the air on that razor. We cut that left side for people not to go up. I think it's going to get only get better, though. Rock crawling is more of a technical, slow, you know, it's still a race, but it, it's more of a technical climb through boulders and stuff like that. Rock racing is more of wide open, full throttle hill climbs. These guys don't quit until they're upside down or broke. These are professional drivers and highly modified vehicles on a closed course. Do not attempt this at home. You will get busted up.
Get your motorsports technician training in as few as nine months at the Motorcycle Technology Center. The Southern Art Racing Series for Rock Bouncers is the big buggies on like 43 inch tires uh, like Plowboy or Screaming Blue with Bobby Tanner. We are the only one. We just started last year. This is our second year in. Basically it's five events through the year. They earn points similar to NASCAR and whoever wins at the end of the year is $10,000 winner. This buggy is pushing $100,000 to build. Um, I just Luckily, I've been fortunate to have a bunch of people want to help me and have sponsors to do such a thing. But also, at the same time, you can build a buggy for 15, 20,000, and it'd be reliable and still go out and have a good time, which is what it's all about. Who wants to see a man get you some? This is what the big show is at the Turtle. All these rock bouncers coming out here, all these folks here are hoping somebody flips one. They don't want to see them get hurt, but they do like to see a little bit of carnage. He's just one of the awesomest guys here. Everybody pulls for Randall. That's pretty bad to drive handicapped. He's not just working a steering wheel and gas and rear steer. He's driving front wheels, rear wheels, and the throttle and the brake all with one hand. But that's talent. I brought my rear steer pump up this morning, and I didn't have rear steer. I went to throw the rear. I didn't rear it to throw under it, and when it rolled, I just couldn't save it then without the rear steer. And it got a little blaze from the power steering fluid, and I started fire. I started getting the heck out of there. You do it right there. Can I go? Do you really want to do that? I want to try it. You got approval from your father for this? Um, well, Dad's at the top of the hill, so he was shaking his head no, but it looked like a yes. So we'll find out when we get to the top. Oh, great! My daughter's in this one. Oh, As a really passenger. Uh, at least I hope it's a passenger. <laughs> oh yeah, it's her. Awesome. We got up there and Dad's face was just kind of like... What were you thinking going up there? I was so nervous. I was like, Steve, just get me to the top, bro. And we knuckle bumped and he said, you ready to do this? I said, let her eat. Now, what were you thinking to even get in the seat to go up to the top? I was thinking, sweet! Now I want to drive. Looking for great savings on all your off-road gear and accessories? Then head to motosport.com for the hookup on gear from Warren, ITP, Quad Boss, and more. Fisher's ATV World has been brought to you by Wilderness Trail Off-Road Park. 
Lucas Oil, Quad Boss, Dirt Wheels Magazine, Gator Skins, and ATV UTV Action Magazine. We're headed to Albany, New York today. We got to go to the Nashville Airport, catch a plane. We're going to check out the brand new 2014 Can Am lineup. We never know what we're going to see until we get there, but we do know we're going to see a four seater Maverick with power steering. Other than that, it's always a surprise. Obviously the biggest news is the Maverick Max. It was introduced back in September 2012 as a future model year uh, and now it's becoming available in dealership as we speak. So, The big change with the four-seater is the wheelbase, added almost 30 inch of wheelbase so adults can sit properly at the back and be comfortable. The engine followed the rear passenger so it's now in between the rear seat to put that weight toward the back. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as a standard Maverick, same suspension travel, TTA rear suspension, 101 horsepower, the most powerful four-seater available right now. So it's a very good package for four-seater. Driving a Cadillac, the stretch limo. Look out, I'm heading to Vegas with my limo. For me, I think that the lag time would be a lot more with four people in it, but man, I tell you what, I jumped on the throttle and it took off. It meant business right out of the gate, even with four passengers. As a matter of fact, I was kind of getting it a little bit sideways. I was seeing what it could do performance-wise, and I was impressed. It didn't feel like I was in something that had a lot of body roll or lean or it was out of control or it just didn't handle right. It wasn't like they just took a two-seater, stretched it, stuck two seats in the back and called it a day. You know, they did a lot of research on this and, and they did it right. I'm pretty impressed with it. With this kind of capability and the advancement of this machine, it's definitely opened up this industry a lot. And there's a lot of people looking at this four-seater and they want to get their families in it, they want to get their friends in it, and they want to get out and have a good time. We're gonna find some mud, get these girls muddy, take them out in the stretch limo. I'm ready. She has her phone in her pocket, and Brian said these pants are BRP certified. <laughs> That's right. Waterproof. The phone will not be wet. I guess we'll see later what happens. <laughs> she may be unavailable for a call later. <laughs> One more time. All right. Somebody had some fun. I'm not gonna mention any names, but it was my passengers. They had a good time. And they got a bath. Can't beat it, it was hot. It was hot out, I had to cool them off. The ladies got a bath, Brian got a bath. They enjoyed it though. Screamed a little bit going into the mud hole, but it was all worth it. A little wet, a little dirty, but it was fun. Oh, I had a blast, definitely. And I just wanted to say that my phone is perfectly dry. And uh, that's all I could ask for. <laughs> I can't say yeah. the same about myself, though. I'm <laughs> wet and dirty and muddy and stinky, but I had a blast. What can I say? <laughs> The Maverick line for 2014, we have a base Maverick. It's uh, now available in white. We have a Maverick XRS non-DPS unit. There's no power steering. Some people prefer that system still. And we also have XRS DPS, which now includes the tri-mode dynamic power steering with Biscalot QE. And then new for 2014, which is a very popular model at this press intro, is the 1000R X XC, which is 60 inches wide instead of 64 like the XRS.
For me, I think that the XXC handles better in the woods. It, it sticks a little bit more. You know, you can carve your corners out and it just feels, I guess the, just the ergonomics of it and the ability to cut through the trees, whereas the RS, you feel like you might take off a tire. And when you're that wide, it just, I don't know, it's a totally different feeling. When you narrow that machine up four inches and you get in there, it does make a big difference. I mean, you're still getting Fox Podium shocks on both machines. It's just one is a little bit more narrow than the other one. So you know, it's all about what kind of ride you want to do. If you want to do West Coast, you get the RS with a 64 inch wide. And if you want to do you know, tight woods ride, no matter where you're at in the United States or in the world, you'll want to go with the XXC with a 60 inch. With a deeper Maverick lineup, it complements our existing Commander lineup, which obviously we have an 800 and 1000 platform and a new uh, 1000 XTP Commander. And now the Maverick line, we feel like we have one of the deepest side-by-side -side lineups in the industry. Closed captioning for Fisher's ATV World has been brought to you by Rick's Motorsport Electrics. Well, that's all the time we have this week from right here at the Dirty Turtle in Bedford, Kentucky. If you're on the web, you can check us out at fishersatvworld.com. And until next week, ride on and keep it real. I don't tell too many people this. It's an ejector seat, but my daughter gives me lip. I hit that and she flies out. But I don't tell people that. I usually stick with the override, rabbit limiter story. I dare it.